Well, last night, the Portress, it was impregnable. Well, the last couple of weeks, it's been stormed and ransacked. Uh, they've lost the last two there. They've lost three of their last four. They were two games clear at Port on top of the ladder. Not anymore. Essendon are charging two. Unbelievably good win from the visitors. Yeah, it was a bit of a sloppy start to the game. There wasn't, uh, I think there was only two goals kicked for the, three goals kicked for the whole quarter. So, um, Essendon sort of, Played the game they want, the way they wanted to, didn't let Port Adelaide get out and in, in, in an open space and, and run and carry the way they want to play. So they did their homework really well and, and it's probably one of the toughest road trips in footy at the moment. And they've gone over there and got the got the four points. So the second quarter, this is probably where the game really broke open. Um, Essendon kicked four goals to, to one to lead by um, four goals at half at half time and then Port sort of edged their way back in in the third quarter and, and started to come and then late they kicked the first two in the, the start of the last quarter and it was a really good contest and you thought here that maybe Port might get away with it and then um, Dyson Heppel who was really well held on the night um, got on the end of that one and, and sort of sealed the game um, there. The, the three things that I learnt, um, the final eight is not locked in. Two, Kane Corns is incredibly valuable to Port Adelaide. And the three, the Bombers tackling stifled the power. 96 to power. 62, I think, the tackle count. Wusha, they were, from the get-go, relentless and ruthless. Yeah, it's intensity, isn't it? It's not necessarily always just the actual count of the tackling, but it shows the attitude to get numbers around the footy and, and keep intense pressure on the opposition. So, um, yeah, it was, they were obviously up, ready for the challenge. If you were umpiring... Tell us what you would do with the whistle when you see this occur. Yeah, I'd blow the whistle and pay a free kick to uh, for holding the ball um, or incorrect disposal. Yeah, <laughs> he had plenty of opportunity to get it on his boot. Had to read uh, that the, the pressure was coming quicker than it was and get it on his boot. It was a really important part of the game as well. Obviously, the Port Adelaide player came through and picked it up and then kicked the goal to bring it back to two points, I think. So I think they probably got that, that one wrong on the yeah, night. and I think they would own up to saying that that was an error. It wasn't them paying the rules the way they're expected to be paid, I think, was just a mistake. I think that's been a frustrating part for the supporters and the players as well, is you get a perfect tackle like that. And if it happens once off, yeah, fair enough, you'll let it go. But it's happened consistently that... Because there's so much grey area on, all you got to do is have an attempt now. And if you give an attempt, then it's OK, it's play on. So it's, it is a frustrating part for supporters and players. That yeah. should have been a match-saving tackle that was applauded by a football nation, I reckon. It was lucky that they won in the end. Uh, the Bombers on the road used to be diabolical. <laughs> for the best part of 10 years, 7 and 36, they've turned it around unbelievably. They've got yeah, a really good even spread at the moment um, across their whole group. Obviously with Job going down a few weeks ago, they've all, they've all sort of put their hand up and, and got an even contribution and they're playing some really good footy. Last night, Hodgie, I mean, we know the crowds have been extraordinary, the noise has been extraordinary at Port last night. This whole never tear us apart piece about getting the Port Adelaide Magpies and the Port Adelaide Power to become one club again. It was pretty extraordinary stuff. I think if you, uh, if you look at it, It does build you up, uh, it builds you up with, with the crowd as well because it does get you going a little bit. I remember Tommy Haley said when he played the Tigers, he'd be warming up singing uh, with Andrew Mackey singing yeah. the uh, Tigers song, Yellow and Black, <laughs> just doing the hand was so, Some songs get you, don't they? Especially when you've got, what, what's the capacity there, 50,000 people mm. all singing together, you're sort of kicking the ball and you are, you're starting to sing with them because it's a good catchy song. <laughs> Jackson Trengove, uh, he was on crutches yesterday, he did a good job uh, in the rooms, he was mic'd up and gave us great access. Let's, let's move it. We're sitting, we're sitting one side and we're going down the one side. Let's take the game on, move, move the ball like we want to do, get them off balance a bit. Let's go, H. Keep putting head over it, mate. Keep working, buddy. Big strong man. Big strong man. It's going to start turning. It's going to turn. We turned, but not enough last night. Who's the yapper from your end, uh, Hodgie? Uh, the yapper, Sammy Mitchell. Uh, actually, we've got a lot of blokes who, who give a lot of feedback. If any senior guy that's not playing, um, you encourage them to come down. As long as they've been to the team meetings, you encourage them to come down and, and chat. So we've had a few of the senior guys injured. Gibbo, Sam, this year that have come down and give us a bit of inf information and feedback at halftime. 